Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Welcome to another episode of the Halloween Podcast. I am your host, Lyle Perez. It's October 5th, 2024, and today we're counting down our Haunted America series with a trip to the Magnolia State, Mississippi. Now I have to say this one hits close to home for me. Mississippi is very close to where I live, and I visit the state pretty often. From its small towns to historic cities, there's something about Mississippi's deep history that makes it perfect for ghost stories. From haunted antebellum homes to eerie battlefields, Mississippi has some of the most chilling hauntings located in the South. We're going to explore the state's most infamous haunted spots, and I've got some good stories lined up for you. As always, we'll dig into the history behind these places and talk about the spirits that roam them, and share recent encounters that keep these tales alive. So grab some sweet tea, settle in, and let's dive into the haunted history of Mississippi. Let's kick things off with the McRaven House in Vicksburg, often referred to as the most haunted house in Mississippi. Built in 1797, McRaven is more than just a haunted house. It's a piece of history that survived through multiple eras. Initially constructed as a two-room structure for wayfarers, the house expanded over the years, witnessing the Civil War, epidemics, and personal tragedies. During the Siege of Vicksburg in 1863, McRaven served as a field hospital, and it's said that some of the wounded soldiers never left. Visitors often report hearing the sounds of phantom footsteps echoing through the halls. The spirits of Confederate soldiers are frequently seen wandering the grounds, especially near the back of the house, where many were buried. Another resident ghost is that of Mary Elizabeth Howard, who passed away during childbirth in 1836. People have seen her ghost in the upstairs bedrooms, where her presence is felt as a cold breeze or as a figure sitting in a rocking chair, cuddling something invisible in her arms. Recently, ghost hunters captured an eerie EVP during a late night investigation, where a voice clearly whispered, help me. The McRaven house offers daily tours and is a must visit for those looking to experience one of Mississippi's most haunted locations firsthand. Next, let's head over to Natchez, where King's Tavern stands as one of Mississippi's oldest buildings, dating back to the late 1700s. The building has a violent history, and today it's known for its connection to one ghost in particular, Madeline the mistress of the original owner, Richard King. According to legend, Manaline was murdered by King's jealous wife, and her body was hidden inside the chimney. Her spirit is said to haunt the tavern to this day. People have seen her reflection in mirrors, only for it to disappear when they turn around. Guests and staff alike have reported hearing footsteps and disembodied voices late at night. Cold spots are frequently felt, especially near the chimney where her body was supposedly hidden. Interestingly, King Taverns is also believed to be haunted by other spirits, likely tied to the tavern's history of violence. Glasses are often knocked off tables, chairs move on their own, and silverware has been known to fly across the room. EVP sessions conducted at the tavern have captured the voice of a woman, believed to be Madeline, asking for help. King's Tavern closed in 2022, but it remains a popular stop on Natchez ghost tours. Though you can no longer dine at King's Tavern, its haunted history continues to draw paranormal enthusiasts eager to experience Madeline's lingering presence. In Jackson, we stop at the old Capitol building, 
which served as Mississippi's state capital from 1839 to 1903. The building witnessed some of the most pivotal moments in the state's history, including the signing of Mississippi's secession from the Union in 1861. But it's not just the building's political history that draws visitors. It's also the ghosts. One of the most famous spirits is that of John A. Quitman, a former governor and military leader. Quitman's ghost is often seen near the legislative chambers, pacing as if he still has unfinished business. Visitors frequently report the smell of cigar smoke in the hallways, a habit Quitman was known for during his life. There are also accounts of disembodied footsteps echoing through the empty halls. In 2019, a museum staff member reported seeing a shadowy figure standing at the top of the grand staircase. When they moved closer, the figure vanished into thin air. Today, the old Capitol building operates as a museum and is open to visitors. Just be prepared for a ghostly encounter. Our next stop takes us to the Windsor Ruins, located in Claiborne County. These hauntingly beautiful remains are all that's left of the Grand Windsor Mansion, built in 1861. The mansion was tragically destroyed by fire in 1890, but its 23 towering columns still stand, casting an eerie silhouette against the Mississippi sky. Many believe the spirits of those who once lived in the mansion still roam the grounds. Visitors frequently report seeing ghostly figures moving among the columns, most notably a Confederate soldier who seems to be trapped in time. At dusk, strange mists rise from the ground, and some have heard the sound of horse hooves and carriage wheels approaching, though nothing appears. In 2022, a tourist captured an unsettling photograph of what appears to be a shadowy figure standing near one of the columns. The Windsor ruins are open to the public, making it a must-visit for history lovers and paranormal investigators alike. In Pascagoula, we find the Longfellow House, a stunning antebellum mansion built in 1850. Although the house bears the name of the famous poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, the real draw today is its haunted reputation. Visitors frequently report encounters with a ghostly woman in white, believed to be a former guest who died under mysterious circumstances. The woman in white is often seen wandering the upstairs hallways late at night, or standing at the foot of some unlucky guest's bed. Some have described feeling a cold presence as they walk through the house, and staff members report hearing footsteps in the kitchen when no other person is around. There have also been reports of objects moving on their own, adding to the eerie atmosphere of this old mansion. The Longfellow House is still open to the public for private events and tours, offering visitors a chance to experience both its history and its hauntings. Next, we visit Rowan Oak in Oxford, the former home of Nobel Prize winning author William Faulkner. Faulkner lived at Rowan Oak from 1930 until his death in 1962. The house still holds a deep connection to his life and work. But Rowan Oak is not only a literary landmark, it's also rumored to be haunted by Faulkner himself. Visitors have reported seeing Faulkner's ghost walking the grounds, especially near the library, where he wrote some of his most famous novels. Others claim to hear the sound of typewriter keys clanking away in his study, even though the room has been untouched for years. There have also been sightings of a mysterious woman in period clothing, thought to be a member of the original Seagog family who owned the property before Faulkner. Rowan Oak is open to the public for tours, and whether you're a fan of Faulkner's work or interested in the paranormal, this hauntingly beautiful estate offers a glimpse into both Mississippi's literary and ghostly history. The Anchuca Mansion, located in Vicksburg, is another antebellum home 
with a storied history. Built in 1830, Anchuca survived the Civil War and even hosted Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who delivered a speech from its balcony. Today, it operates as a bed and breakfast, but some guests report more than just Southern hospitality. They report ghostly encounters. One of the most commonly seen spirits is that of a little boy, often heard running up and down the mansion's grand staircase. Guests have reported hearing his laughter late at night, even though no children were staying in the house. There's also the ghost of a former resident who is often seen standing by the fireplace, watching over the room before disappearing into thin air. Anchuca Mansion is open to guests year-round, offering a blend of historic charm and a ghostly encounter that keeps visitors coming back. In Ellisville, we find the Deason House, one of Mississippi's oldest surviving homes built in 1845. This house played a significant role during the Civil War when Major Amos McLemore, a Confederate officer, was murdered by a deserter named Newton Knight. McLemore's murder is said to have left a lasting mark on the house, and his ghost is believed to still haunt the property. Visitors to the Deason house often report hearing footsteps on the stairs, even when no one else is around. Some have heard the sound of doors slamming shut, and a few have even seen the ghost of McLemore himself pacing the halls as if searching for his killer. Cold spots and eerie noises are common, especially in the room where McLemore was shot. The Deason house is open to the public for tours, giving visitors a chance to step back in time and possibly encounter a ghost from the Civil War era. Our next stop is the Duff Green Mansion, located in Vicksburg. Built in 1856 by Duff Green, a gift for his bride, the mansion served as a Confederate hospital during the Civil War. With its history of death and suffering, it's no surprise that the Duff Green Mansion is considered one of the most haunted places in Mississippi. Guests frequently report experiencing the ghost of a young girl who is believed to have died during a yellow fever epidemic. She's often seen playing in the upstairs hallways, laughing as she runs through the mansion. There are also reports of Confederate soldiers lingering in the mansion, their groans of pain still echoing through the halls. The Duff Green Mansion operates as a bed and breakfast today, offering ghost tours for those interested in its haunted past. Whether you come for the history or the hauntings, you won't leave without a story to tell. Our final stop takes us to Stuckey's Bridge in Enterprise, one of Mississippi's most infamous haunted locations. According to legend, a man named Stuckey who was part of the infamous Dalton Gang, ran a small inn near the bridge in the 1800s. Stuckey would lure visitors to his inn, rob them, and then murder them by hanging their bodies from the bridge. Eventually, his crimes were discovered, and Stuckey was hung from the bridge by the townspeople. But it's said that Stuckey's ghost remains at the bridge, seeking revenge. Many visitors claim to see Stuckey's ghost swinging from the bridge late at night, his figure illuminated by the faint moonlight. Some say they've heard the sound of splashing water, as if something heavy has fallen into the river below. There are also reports of eerie laughter and ghostly whispers along the bridge. The story of Stuckey has made this bridge a hot spot for paranormal investigators. Though the bridge has deteriorated over the years, it's still accessible to the public. However, visitors are warned to be cautious, both because of the decaying structure and the spirits that might be lingering around the bridge. And there we have it, guys. That is our tour of Mississippi. I hope you guys enjoyed our look at the Magnolia State because it's packed with spooky stories and restless spirits. If you're enjoying our Haunted America series, don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this podcast. 
And don't forget to check out those show notes because there's a little bit more information on there as well as the address of these places. If you'd like to support the show, you can head over to thehalloweenpodcast.com, check out our merch store, pick up some stickers, some postcards, maybe a shirt or two, and uh, yeah, it will definitely help out the Halloween podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you want to be a guest on the Halloween podcast, because once Han in America is done, I'm going to need some guests to be on some shows with me, send me an email, thehalloweenpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Halloween podcast. And don't forget to come back tomorrow as we explore the haunted history of our next state, which is Missouri. I can't wait to dive into that one. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Bombas makes the most comfortable socks, underwear, and t-shirts. Warning, Bombas are so absurdly comfortable you may throw out all your other clothes. Sorry, do we legally have to say that? No, this is just how I talk, and I really love my Bombas. They do feel that good, and they do good, too. One item purchased equals one item donated. To feel good and do good, go to bombas.com slash listen and use code listen for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash listen and use code listen at checkout.